St. Augustine, also known as Augustine of Hippo or St. Austin, was born into a family of modest means in Tagast, a city in North Africa that has since been renamed Souk Aras. The region was part of the Roman Empire, but was considered the hinterlands since it was across the Mediterranean Sea from the big bad city of Rome. Augustine was extremely ambitious in his youth and hoped to move to Rome one day and gain a position working for the empire. This would be the equivalent of someone who was born to a family of modest means in a small rural town west of the Mississippi, hoping to go and live in New York and get a job on Wall Street. Augustine's mother was a Christian, but his father believed in the Roman pantheon of gods, which was the official belief system of the Roman Empire at the time. It was not yet the Holy Roman Empire. Being a Christian would not have been career enhancing for Augustine, given his desire to work for the empire. Other religions and philosophies were more prominent than Christianity at the time, including Neoplatonism and Manichaeism. Augustine's family couldn't afford to send all of their children away to be educated, so they selected him as the lucky one who would study away from home. They sent him to Carthage, located in present-day Tunisia, just across the sea from Rome. You might think of this as getting a job in Stamford or Greenwich. It's not quite the Big Apple, but it's closer than Kansas. In his third year of study in Carthage, Augustine began to focus on philosophy and theology. He regarded the Bible as a series of myths. In the same time period, he encountered Manichaeism and converted. This belief system, founded by and named for the Iranian prophet Mani, or Manes, centered on the theme of a primeval conflict between light and darkness, similar to the struggle of the Jedi Knights against the forces of evil in the Star Wars movie series. The particularly attractive point to Augustine was that Manichaeism holds that evil is an outside force and we are not responsible for it. The religion almost also promised pure knowledge with no particular structure, and it made the book of Genesis look ridiculous. All of this was consistent with Augustine's views and interests at the time. In particular, he did not want a structured spiritual life. He was more of a free spirit. Years later, he met the Manichae bishop Faustus and was disappointed by his lack of knowledge. Though disillusioned, Augustine could not accept Christianity despite continuing pressure from his mother to convert. Meanwhile, during his time in Carthage, at the age of 19, Augustine took a mistress who would remain with him for over 15 years. He fathered a child by her, a son named Adeodatus. Due in large part to his choice of friends, he struggled with hedonistic tendencies, including excessive alcohol consumption and sexual addiction. After completing his studies in Carthage and teaching grammar at a school back in his native Tagast, Augustine obtained a job teaching rhetoric in Carthage and became rather famous for it. But after nine years of struggling with unruly students, Augustine gave up this job and went to Rome, where he taught for a time. He eventually landed a prestigious appointment as the Imperial Professor of Rhetoric in Milan. His dream of working for the Roman Empire was, at last, a reality. While in Milan, Augustine went to hear the Christian Bishop Ambrose give a sermon. Augustine wasn't particularly interested in religion, but he had heard that Ambrose had a very artful speaking style and he wanted to observe it in conjunction with his teaching of rhetoric. In listening to the sermon, Augustine suddenly realized that what the Manichees had told him about Christianity was untrue. He soon decided to abandon this religion because he had been, for some time, on a quest for the truth, and the idea of being fed lies was more than he could bear. Still, he could not accept Christianity, so he was simply afloat, searching for the truth, but with no attachment to any particular religion. As he continued to listen to Ambrose's sermons, Augustine was exposed to his Neoplatonist ideals, and eventually he began to feel an attraction to this way of thinking. Ambrose spoke of God as pure spirit, which Augustine liked, and he also was attracted to the symbology that Ambrose used. Nonetheless, Augustine still was not ready to embrace Christianity because of his continuing struggles with the flesh. In 386, while in a garden in Milan, 
Augustine heard a child singing over and over again, Take and read! Take and read! He reasoned that a child would have no reason to say such a thing over and over again, so he decided it was an angel sending him a message. He took up the Bible and opened it at random. The first scripture passage his eyes landed on was one of Paul's letters in which he admonished his fellow Christians to give up the concerns of the flesh. This was the moment of Augustine's complete conversion. He was baptized by Ambrose the following year in 387 at the age of 32. Augustine went on to become a priest, shockingly embracing celibacy, and eventually he became Bishop of Hippo, which is why he is often called St. Augustine of Hippo. He said that he had the sense that God was calling him all his life, almost against his will. Despite the fact that he achieved exactly what he had set out to do professionally, he always had the feeling that something was missing. This is why he said to God, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Of Augustine's 93 works, his most famous is his book, Confessions, more commonly known as The Confessions of St. Augustine. It is a spiritual autobiography and, at the same time, a sort of anthropological work as he looks at how God interacts with humans, especially himself. The title itself is a sort of pun. It is the confession of his sinful life prior to conversion, but it also uses the word confession in the sense of the faith that a person confesses or professes. The book is written in an unusual style for an autobiography. He does write in the first person, but rather than addressing his audience, he writes to God. He traces his journey from a rather raucous youth involved in stealing and heavy drinking to his conversion to Manichaeism, his sexual addiction, his eventual disenchantment with Manichaeism, and finally, his very slow, almost reluctant conversion to Christianity. He says that God continued to call him even when he didn't know that God was there. God turned out to be the force of light that Augustine just couldn't resist. <laughs>